Hi, my name is Ron. My name is LaShawn. Welcome back to the Marriage Moments. Well, we got another good question for you. Oh, this is a really good one. Yeah. I have been going through in my marriage with my husband for years, and the only advice that people can give me is just pray about it. I'm tired of praying. I'm tired of crying. What else can I possibly do? Please help. Ooh, tired of prayer. Oh, my God. Well. Well, let me tell you like this. If you don't have prayer, it's going to be a big issue, Houston. Number one, you can't succeed without prayer. You got to have prayer in everything. You know, regardless of what people say, regardless of saying that prayer can't help you, that is a lie from it hell. It is. That is a true lie. Prayer can help. Now, if a person's going through something, now you got to use some common sense. But the Bible says, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So clearly right there, the Bible simply says that if you acknowledge him in everything that you do, he will give you direction, guidance, and understand into right. all things. And I think, too, um, sometimes because people don't understand what prayer really is and how to effectively pray, they really don't see results. Yeah. Part of that is your your faith works by love. And, you know, faith without works is dead. And so if you use prayer in, in agreement with God, in agreement with God's word and faith, you will see some things happen. I promise you that there is nothing that you can touch God about that he will not address in your lives. Now, he might not address it the way you want it addressed. Uh, he may on, not girl. address it how you want it to come address. On, but girl. I wanted to read a scripture to you that's really important to me because I think a lot of times we end up giving God these laundry lists of things. And in essence, what we're doing is dumping on them with no hope for a solution, no ho no expectation for a good outcome. But we dump this stuff on God and then we walk away from his presence or that prayer time with our expectations the same. And in Proverbs 18 and 3 in the Message Bible, it talks about <laughs> when, you, when you keep talking, when you answer a question before the answer is given, that's stupid and it's rude. So we go to God. With this laundry list of stuff, I can't stand this, I can't stand this. If you don't change this, I'm going to do this. Directives, ultimatums, to God the Father. Ooh. And then we walk away because we really don't want to know the answer. Let's be real with yourself. First of all, you're tired. You don't know what to do. And you have some things on the inside of you. And it's not blame, but it's the truth. You have some things inside of you that need to be addressed by God the Father. The Deep second Lord. scripture that I wanted to read real quick is Romans 8 and 26. And it says, likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities, meaning the things that make us sick, like our husbands, sometimes like our family, like our jobs, right? For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself makes makes intercession for us with groanings which not can be uttered. Sometimes you just got to get on your face before God and let your spirit man cry out to God. Because really in the natural, you don't even know how to pray. But the spirit of God will give you the power and the knowledge and the opportunity and the grace to pray for your husband. Right. And let me say something what my wife said was very important. When you start asking God and just because it don't work on your time. That don't mean God ain't listening and he ain't hearing. Mm -hmm. Number one, you need to realize that things that you say aren't based upon your feelings. It's based upon what God says. Sometimes some things not going to come in a moment in the blink of an eye. See mm -hmm. what it is. And it's making me mad. I'm trying not to get mad. But you, what you want to try to be is like a have a genie God to say, like, if I tell you what to do, you answer me. You know, that's a bunk, bunch of hogwash. Yeah. You know, don't you dare put our father in that boat yeah. like he has to answer you. No. You well, come and it's not the baby that he don't, they feel like he has to answer them. It's like people need an answer. They need an answer for God, but they sometimes they just don't wait for the answer. Right. But what the Bible says, you are in need of patience. patience. I know yeah. it's a curse word to a lot of people, but sometimes you have to wait in God's perfect timing for That's things right. to happen. I'm sorry. If I would have went ahead and <laughs> married people before I met my wife and stuff like that, if I didn't pray, I would have been yeah. divorced twice, probably three times. And mm -hmm. I'm not talking about no three times a lady either, but I'm talking about yeah. separated. And I'm telling you, man, prayer works. I'm a man. I know. Forget yeah. that. Prayer changes things. It prayer really makes does. things happen. The Bible says the fervent prayer, prayer of a righteous person much. really moves God. It, it does much in, in the spirit and in the natural. So we need to check our prayer life before we go saying that prayer doesn't work. What's in your heart? Because right. if there's bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart, Ooh. it's really blocking your prayers. Right. 
And yeah. that is so true. And if you're trying to pray in all honesty and you have unforgiveness in your heart, I'm just being honest. The Bible said he don't hear your prayer. That's right. You know, number one, you have to check yeah. yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah, and I got, just wanted to share a real quick testimony. I, I met a lady years and years ago. I think I was in my early, late teens, early 20s, and um, a, a, a woman was sharing with us in a women's group how she had been praying like 25 years for her husband to get saved. He was an oh, alcoholic. Yeah. Um, he abused himself more than he did her, but he refused to come to church where they're and all this different mm -hmm. stuff. And he finally opened up his heart to Jesus Christ. Um, I'm sh there was a tragedy in their family and he came to church and he gave his heart to the Lord for real, for real, for real, for real sake. That's now, after 25 years of praying, you would think this would have been like the price is right. Like yes. joy all over the place. This lady became angry and even more bitter towards her husband because he pressed into God mm. and God, she ended up divorcing him. And when we, you know, when we were asking her, you know, why did you get a divorce after all these years? And she said mm, mm, mm. that she felt like his getting saved, his coming to God was a cop out for all the horrible things and abandonment that he had caused in their marriage. And she wanted him to pay that unforgiveness kept her from having the man, the guy that she had been praying for, for 25 years. That is, is a sad story. And that don't is. let that be your story. Please don't. And that hurts so bad when I heard that. And actually I was there with them. And I'm like, all this time you pray for a person that all of a sudden you felt like God didn't beat up on that person enough. That's judgment. You stand in judgment. Yeah. And all we got to say is please be careful. Right. You know, be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you pray for. Be careful what you seek after. Well, this is where we're going to stop for now. And uh, before, you know, we get riled up. But remember, keep in touch with us. Be sure to hit us again at songsofsolomonri.com. Or on Facebook at Songs of Solomon Relationship Institute. God and bless you. God bless. Keep Please praying. Let, keep the questions coming. Prayer work and prayer changes. Just things. God yeah. bless. Bye.